Six o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Donna, please call the roll. McCaig? Here. Wirtz? Here. Trent? Here. Griffin? Here. Ware? Here. Rust? Here. Johnson? Here. Campbell? Here. I'd like to do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I'd like to take this time for public comment. Public comments limited to three minutes. Is there anybody like to make a comment, please? See no one, we'll move on to enrollment updates. So Dr. Jackson or Amir, are you, uh, enrollment update? Good evening. Uh, um, these numbers as of today, I just ran it, so I'm just going to give you an overview at this point. Um, total enrolled student for the spring coming class, 24. So as of today, we have 1,262 compared to last year, 1,064, which is 18% uh, increase. Enrolled credits. We have 14,147 compared to last year, 11,965, which is also 18% increase so far. Nelson campus enrolled student count is 123 compared to last year was 74, which is 66% increase. Also full-time enrolled students count is 660 so far compared to 559 last year, which is also 18% increase. Full-time enrolled credits, 9,748 compared to last year, 8,306, which is 17% increase. Part-time students, en um, enrolled students count at 602 as of this morning compared to 505, compared to last year, which is also 19% increase. And part-time enrolled credits, 4399, 4,399, compared to 3,659, which is also 20% increase. So we are doing good so far. And as far as the new students count for the spring class, uh, so far, we have received 391 inquiries compared to last year, 552. Uh, I'm sorry, I uh, take it back. So far, 552 inquiries with compared to uh, 663, I'm sorry. 663 inquiries compared to last year was 552, which is also 20% increase. So far, admissions, we have admitted 389 students compared to last year, 363, which is also 7% increase. As far as the enrollments is concerned for the new students, so far we have registered as of today 78 new students compared to last year, 60, which is also 30% increase. So we are doing a lot of new initiatives, um, trying to reach out these new students, trying to reach out um, to get them to the each step of the funnel. And we started aggressively reaching out to these potential students for the spring 24. Uh, students who inquire about the college, number one. Second, students who started the online application have not finished. And third, students who have been admitted to help them get, to the, get them to the next level. We use social media blast. We use quite a bit social media, email blast, and the first time we'll be start calling them starting next week. 
so get them to the next level. We are also revising the process of gathering the inquiries. In the past, we did not have any formal process, but we will collect the information and input into the uh, CRM, the one currently we use for the future communication. So we'll have an entire database for them. So we'll reach out to them, not only for this time, for the future purposes also. We will use our CRM for, for its maximum capacity for the recruitment and marketing. So we are still learning a lot of processes, but I'm very much confident that we'll be starting using uh, CRM for full capacity for the next three to six months. From this week started, uh, we are taking more personalized approach by reaching out to students, not as a mass email blast, but also identifying per each program, so we'll talk about their programs also, so they will know exactly before they come what to expect with the program courses, general education, so we'll be uh, reaching out individually to those students. We also start focusing on student using email, current student by reminding them the um, registration is open. Also, we started using a texting campaign, reminding them, and we'll continue to, on the weekly basis, use the texting campaigns to remind them to register for the next semester to increase our student retention. We also revised more improved version of student orientation, which will be focusing more on the student's success, setting the right expectation right from the beginning when they come in, what to expect, and um, we'll definitely be using um, a lot of campaigns to reaching out to have maximum um, their attendance. We also are working on reach, uh, outreach and recruitment effort by adding tangible informative information packet to give out to the new student when they come in the first time either to visit or to register so when they go home at least they will take a, tangible information with them instead of um, currently we don't give out anything so they know exactly what to expect and mainly my focus will be or the college focus will be basically giving them an academic plan for the next two years of course there's going to change but at least they will know what classes they're taking next semester and the following semester and the following semester so setting the right expectation and we're putting a lot of other initiative, and I mean, I'm thank you very, very much and very appreciative in the marketing department helping us out, um, doing a lot of um, specific campaigns on different initiatives, and they're doing um, a wonderful job um, by reaching out um, specific markets, and we analyze the data end of the campaigns, and, and, and really it's working out. So a lot of initiatives on the way, and um, I'm very much hopeful that we'll make a very good impact um, for the next semester and the next following fall class. Thanks, Amir. So the, the new students that you mentioned, the traditional, non-traditional, what, what's the makeup? It's a traditional and non-student, all of them. Like because, half. yeah, um, mostly depending on, I'm utilizing a data at this point, so looking at what our student body has been, but one of the initiatives I'm gonna be focusing on reaching out to the adult population to see what kind of initiative we put attract them because like I said the last time I'm the open example. I mean, I was a non-traditional student dropout from the high school and um, help and whatever, who I, whoever I am at this point is because of the community college. And my focus will be also putting some new initiative to reaching out the community to have a perception they have about the community college to change the perception, reaching out to the superintendent or principal also to that we are here to serve the community and we are here to change people's lives and that's the focus that's going to be moving forward. I think, I think too, one of the <clears throat> areas, even three, four years ago, looking at the data, and I have it in front of me, but the, 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 when we talked about enrollment decrease, there, there was a very clear indication that those non-traditional students were sort of falling and we had an opportunity there to grow. So I think perhaps those working parents, but also there are, as we talked earlier, 
individuals who might be in a job who, who need, and I think a great example of that is, is our criminal justice program where I know Jessica Noble's working with a lot of the police departments in the area who would love to finish their degree or finish their credentials, but there's never been a, an easy pathway, and, and her program is one that's on that CBE sort of pathway, which provides the flexibility, agility to be able to, I think, address what Amir is talking about. So, and then, of course, your traditional students, which are your high school students. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Kevin. I think you were leaning in there. No? Yeah, I was just going to ask uh, somebody if this uh, would be possible to have this report, or at least the, a summary of this report, in writing. The one I just presented? Of course. Be the same one that you send out every Monday, right? Yes, yeah. every and, uh, Monday yeah. I usually uh, send out the weekly that to the board, enrollment numbers yeah. report, which no, is... I mean, yeah, for the board, though. You send it to the board? Yeah, sure. I can do that, yeah. Okay. I, I usually forward that right when Amir sends it, but I didn't do it yesterday. We were, okay. we were tied up with other stuff. I'll send it, yeah. It'll have all the numbers, and so you'll get that every Monday, like our campus does. I think, well, I think we were actually, the last time we talked about this, it was like the, the week before the board meeting, so it was just once a month, which in my, as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. So. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Budget health update, yeah, sure. Dr. So, Traska. Yeah, a couple points here. <clears throat> so um, from, last, from last month to this month, so current tuition and fee revenue has increased about $260,000 from this time last year. Um, we are seeing increase in our utility expenses since uh, the end of September last year, as we expected. And you might recall we, I think it was an additional $400,000 there or around that we asked to um, kind of have budgeted for, for this year's utilities, and we're seeing that come come to uh, fruition. Um, other areas uh, of increases are obviously conferences and meetings, salaries and benefits. Um, uh, we, you know, we still have open positions, but we're beginning to fill those positions, so that's where we're seeing some of that. Um, as, you may, as you will recall as well, last year we were having difficulties filling positions, um, and so again, we're, we're getting better at that. I think the, the shift last, last month is really gonna help us um, getting folks on board you know, onboarded and into their positions much sooner. And why I say that is because a lot of times we, we might have an interested person, but we might not be able to get them <laughs> approved until, you know, say they, they get a, uh, we offer them the job and it's the day after the board meeting, they might have to wait another 30 days to start. So this way they'll be able to start. And sometimes that's uh, not very attractive for, for folks. Um, and then although we have in, uh, experienced some increases in expenses, we still are on track, um, as is our plan always for an operational expenses that will be within budget this year again. So we're, we're moving forward in the way we should and um, you know, happy with the team following, following that direction. So that's, uh, that's all I've got. Next, we have the omnibus agenda. The omnibus agenda is presented for a vote. Is there anybody in the board would like to be held out and voted separately? Yes, I would like to consider uh, item M, personnel, separately. And um, that's it. Okay, uh, do I have a motion to approve an omnibus agenda exception of item M? I have a motion? Motion. I have a second? Any discussion? Call for the roll, please. Trent? Yes. Johnson? Yes. McCaig? Yes. Wirtz? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Ware? Yes. Rust? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, do I have a motion to approve Item M on the anonymous agenda, please. Motion and second. Any discussion? Uh, just a question. We have had two separations, uh, full, uh, full time people. Are uh, we replacing or filling these positions? And if so, wouldn't it normally be on the uh, personnel report to? 
for approval to fill those positions? Talking about the full-time positions, learning assistant specialist and assistant director, talent search, student services, student affairs, those two? Yeah, yeah, the, those two, right? Did we already did we already approve filling those positions before? Well, if if they're if they're already approved positions and they were filled, and now those folks have resigned or whatever, they would we, we would aim to fill those positions. So they're they're yeah. budgeted positions. So it's so you're saying it's, it's automatic as long as it's a budgeted position. Right, right. And and unless the manager proposes some sort of shift, you know, if someone leaves, there might be an opportunity to step back, look at that role. I haven't seen any of those proposals for either of these positions. Correct me if I'm wrong. We have, right? Okay. Yeah. Please call the roll. Trent? Yes. Campbell? Yes. McKay? Yes. Wirtz? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Ware? Yes. Rust? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Motion passes. Program, Human Services, AAA. To motion to approve. So move. Second. Second. Uh, have any discussion? Call the roll, please. Rust? Yes. Griffin? Yes. McKay? Yes. Wirtz? Yes. Trent? Ware, yes. Johnson? Yes. Campbell? Yes. The organization restructure? Do I have a motion to approve? Do I have a second? Any discussion? Call the roll, please. A little bit of discussion. Oh, um, now, these three IT positions, um, Will they all report either directly or indirectly to the uh, chief data and technology officer? Yeah, directly or indirectly. Okay. So I think the data, the data and business analyst would report directly to the CDTO, and the uh, network technician role would likely report below that person. So will that uh, CDTO? Sure. Will Will that person be hired in time to have input that, that's on hiring the, these on these positions? That's the goal. That's why we wanted to get the authorization now. So we're hoping that we can have the CDTO recommendation if we get lucky January. If we're unlucky, we hope by February, and then by that time these positions will be posted, and that CDTO would be expected to lead these searches. Okay. I, I'm just a little bit, little bit concerned that maybe that person, that CDTO. <laughs> Will have different have a different idea on how to manage his department or her department. Yeah. So so in terms of, of positions, etc. Yeah. Like, what if they suggest different positions or reducing or adding other positions? Then that will be okay because we'll start these searches when that person starts. So does that make sense? So we want authorization to start moving these forward, but that CDTO might come in and say, "Listen, I, you know." Rather than a data and business, maybe we blend that or we do something different. Um, that, that's, that's certainly okay. So these positions are being authorized, but they'll be budgeted for in fiscal year 25. So we're just asking to be able to move forward and continue developing them. By the time the CDTO is hired, they will have insight into, into helping sort of solidify that. So if anything were to change, we would come back to the board. I think the one position that probably wouldn't change at all would be the, the technician role. That is an absolute need in the department. We only have one network technician. And I mean, just recently we had the network crash and it, it, and, and it, it was difficult. Um, and that's been a need for several years. The business and data analyst roles have both been vetted for multiple years and they were reinforced in the report that we really need those roles. However, if this person is hired, short answer is absolutely they would have a voice in being able to say, hey, you know, can I, I think I want to look at this a little differently, and we, we certainly allow that to happen. So this is authorization to move forward with these roles. Of course, if that new person comes in and has a different opinion, we'll certainly explore that opinion. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good questions. Please call the roll. Griffin? Yes. Trent? Yes. McKay? Yes. 
Wirtz? Yes. Ware? Yes. Rust? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Informational items? Dr. Traska, is there anything you want to highlight? Uh, I know that the recognition report, typically Dr. Artis will come up and talk through that, but if you have questions on the others, we're happy to address. That's E, so. A, a few, pay, few more or a few less pages than last month, but uh, we did just want to take time to recognize, um, a, as usual, um, I want to point out members of our maintenance teams seem to end up in here, and I think that speaks to the work ethic and, and how they're helping serve our, our many employees and departments on campus. But I want to give a quick shout out to Corey Zipman, uh, Charles Brim, Michael Lucas, Quentin Wagner, and Brad Maher. They are a part of um, what we call Team Sunglow. Maintenance has adopted um, all of the college's approved colors and our new branding, and so they're divided into teams. But essentially, they are our HVAC uh, facilities team. And as you can imagine, they're uh, in great demand right now. But um, with the board support, we've been able to finally staff up that team, and we have a ton of experience. We've been able to bring back um, a retiree from uh, earlier this year to also kind of help cross-train some of the newer team members. But they're saving us tons of money by not having to use outside contractors, and so we just definitely want to recognize their efforts. Chris McLaughlin uh, in IT recently helped the HR department with a, a project, um, was very eager to answer our questions, research what he didn't know, and then also sit and train our staff. So we want to recognize Chris. Uh, Trina Cheatham is a part-time dental clinic assistant. Sounds like she really picked up um, when we lost a full-time uh, day dental clinic assistant, and so uh, there was no impact to the student learning or the patient process, and we want to recognize Trina's efforts there. Sarah Ditterline is our learning management support specialist, and she uh, is apparently the Blackboard guru in terms of helping uh, a number of our faculty members just take some of their outdated grading experiences and, and course shells and has been helping troubleshoot and find uh, solutions that are definitely keeping that learning, uh, that student learning on track and our faculty being able to give them immediate feedback. So want to recognize Sarah Haley uh, Disterhoff and Julie Laco Swanson are our library assistants. If you haven't been to the library in a while, and I think you guys have, um, they're doing a lot of creative things. As we know, our students who engage with our library tend to get engaged in our tutoring as well as checking out um, some of our databases and materials. They retain it at a much higher rate. So um, their supervisor is just recognizing their efforts and helping drive and increase foot traffic uh, through some of their creative uh, creative ways to get people to the library, so to speak. And then uh, we also want to recognize Tim Hellrung, uh, again, from our maintenance department. He's our um, automotive technician, and as uh, he's been pointed out here, he's also the team MacGyver. So um, if there's not a part available, he's going to fabricate it for you. Um, he's been with the college forever, and um, uh, as they said, he's the driving force and keeps the wheels turning as we enter this inclement weather season. He's getting all of our vehicles prepared, and I hope we don't have to use them for snow removal, but uh, we're prepared thanks to Tim. So any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, Lori. Leadership team reports, Dr. Traska. Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> a couple things. So today, I'm not sure if any board members were able to jump on. We had a <clears throat> couple of AI sessions today with Anna Mills, who teaches at Canada College in San Francisco, um, also uh, kind of known as an expert in the field related to teaching and AI. So she came in and uh, not physically, she joined Zoom and gave us a, a session for the whole team. Had about 100 folks join that and then a faculty session, probably around 30 or so is what I counted um, overall with faculty. We're hoping in the spring to have a broader AI panel um, with some local folks as well as some national folks to kind of begin looking at this at a deeper level. And I know Ron is looking into some some options where m maybe we could subscribe to some AI and then maybe do sort of a experiment on campus, just ask 50 team members to kind of learn, mess around with it, and then come together and look at how that could inform policy and practice on our campus. So that's, that's certainly something that we're looking at. 
Um, I think it was yesterday we had an economic update which was sponsored by our foundation from Charles Gaslow, a senior economist at the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, which was really, really good, and, and I hope we can do that again. Um, I talked to Charles a little bit and asked if he could perhaps do something with our leadership team that just kind of looks at kind of, you know, kind of an ec from an economic perspective, but looking at its relation to education and some of the things that we're trying to do. That also leads me to a point, we're hoping next year to, it's been about five or six years we've, that we've done an economic impact study as an institution, and that's something we like to do every five to seven years, so we're gonna explore that in next year's budget of perhaps um, doing that study. That would also inform some of the things we talked about earlier at the decennial committee of efficiencies and where those priorities may be with certain programs, not just across the region, but of course nationally. A couple other things, um, December 7th, we'll send out our annual culture survey. So earlier this week, which would be yesterday, um, I met with that group, or not, yeah, it was last week, yesterday we met with the KD groups on their data, but we're gonna send that out December 7th, and I think this year we're gonna keep it open a little bit longer. But then, th th this is the survey that was designed last year out of KD3 to really look at culture, advancement, and growth on campus. So we're excited to get that out again, and then of course, May 14th will be the report out to the board and the campus. Um, we do a special all team meeting and we talk through those results and then I also present that to the board, I believe in, at the May board meeting as well. Um, and uh, we'll also probably do, I think it's in February, we have kind of our mid-year um, uh, report on the strategic plan. So we'll show you our progress, looking at you know what we're doing well, how we're kind of working against those benchmarks we set. Are we on pace to meet those benchmarks or are we um, struggling a bit? And we'll talk through some of that. Um, so with that being said, I think that pretty much concludes unless there's any questions for me, but just uh, thank you again for the support and uh, confidence in our work. It's, it's not always easy, but we appreciate the support. Thank you. I just want to piggyback on what Lori said. <laughs> I wasn't quick enough. Jen Fuller, I would like to recognize oh. her publicly when she presented um, in October about CBE. Us, she yeah. did an incredible job. Mm -hmm. She was so well received by everyone in the crowd. There were people waiting for her afterwards. And um, <clears throat> you can just tell she's very passionate about the work and she's a pioneer, I think, yep. with within the institution. So I just wanted to thank her. I know this isn't probably, I wasn't quick enough to piggyback on what Lori was saying, but I just wanna say what a great yeah. job she did. It was impressive. Thank you. We all agree. <laughs>